started, we're going we're gonna to have a triple header today. We're going to talk about news you can use, tricks of the trade, and uh, word hacks that bring you stacks. So we're going to start off right now with, there's a lot of news uh, in the news. So we're going to start off with uh, news you can use. And CNBC put out an article a couple days ago <clears throat> about right now in America, there are more people looking to move from where they're living um, than there has been since the second, after the Second World War. Uh, fully 28% in the survey, 28% of Americans are literally ready to move. Um, and in most cases, they want to do one of two things. They either want to move to a cheaper area of the country because of, of course, remote work, uh, and or they want to move closer to family. So um, <clears throat> they're, they're talking about the number one industry in the last three months has actually been the moving industry boxes, stationary stores, office supply stores, things like that, 500 fold increase versus one year ago um, because people are, are looking to move. And in line with that, um, we finally got some definitive numbers. We've talked for several months about San Francisco has been the most fled city uh, during this pandemic uh, out of about a population of 800,000, close to now 100,000 people have left San Francisco. And they've, they've actually done a survey. Uh, they looked at uh, the forwarding orders from the U.S. Post Office, <clears throat> and they've determined the top five places that San Franciscans have moved. The reason why this is important to all of us is because you know, typically as California goes and the rest of the country goes later on, and, and in California, it's it's usually the the folks in San Francisco who lead in some of the trends. The San Francisco area would include all the social networking companies, uh, you know, Facebook and Zoom and Twitter and Instagram and all them are based up there. <clears throat> but surprisingly, the number one place, we, we thought it was going to be Texas, uh, the number one place where San Franciscans had moved is Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Um, and it's a combination of the lifestyle, uh, the demographic structure, the political structure, and the, the fact that housing is one third to one quarter of what it is in California. Also, um, it's just a much cheaper place to live. Uh, second, surprisingly, is an area I never would have picked. It's Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, the second most number of people, almost 20,000 folks have moved to Hartford and the Connecticut area. Um, once again, same reasons. Uh, median income is very inexpensive. So people who are working remotely, which is now, by the way, 20% of the workforce is living and working remotely. That's a large number out of a, between 160, 180,000 people employed, uh, you know, fully 20% uh, of those folks. So anywhere from 32 to 36 million people are now working remotely. A year ago, that number was around 9%. So now it's 20% of the workforce. They're estimating that within the next five years, about 40% of the workforce, or at that time, it'll be about 40 million people will be working from home. Uh, and of course, that's what you folks all do. Number three, <clears throat> Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, once again, very inexpensive place to live. Uh, that's actually a lot of folks are moving there because of family. I guess that's a, a place where people have come from. Um, number four is the only place in California where Californians are moving to from California, and it's Sacramento, California. We talked about that as being one of the top 10 uh, uh, cities in the United States where people are going to be moving to this year. We talked about that a couple of months ago. There's two places in California people are moving to, Sacramento and Stockton, California. Um, and it's, a, it's the same, same reason. Uh, and then four or fifth, and one that I never figured would make the list is Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, Cleveland has one of the lowest cost of living to income levels in the country. Um, and you guys know I've invested a lot in Cleveland. It's, um, it, it's a great area uh, as long as you're not in the inner city in Cleveland and you know exactly what side of the street you live on. Uh, the the outskirts of Cleveland, some of the suburbs are great, um, and it's a, it's got a high livability index, which means you know there's a work play balance that uh, people admire. So that's the top uh, areas that people are moving to, and you know that would be also something that you guys ought to be looking to if you're picking a specific market versus working on a national basis. 
Um, all right, that's news you can use. Uh, tricks of the trade, <clears throat> a little hack, uh, uh, trick of the trade that you can use. Uh, if, if you've got soap scum or even, you know, you're starting to develop mold in bathtubs, you can take your used coffee grounds and you let it dry out a little bit. You make a paste out of it and you gently rub it into the soap scum in your bathtub or shower. Um, and you let it sit for about 20 minutes and then you, warm, you, you rinse it off with warm water and you'll be surprised how well that uh, works. Also, there's an added benefit. Coffee grounds will help um, reduce clogs and drains and sinks and showers and things like that. So you get a twofer on that deal. Uh, finally, uh, hacks, wording hacks that will make you stacks. Um, we have a graphic for that, but <clears throat> let's just talk about one. I told you we were going to discuss uh, last Thursday. I said we'd talk about this. And this is for those of you who are talking to sellers and the sellers are ghosting you on a follow-up call. So you've had a good conversation with them. And this is not just in the housing business, but in, in other businesses in general. Um, the sellers, when you make the return call, the follow-up call, they're not, they're not responding. They're not picking up, you know, they're essentially ghosting you. One of the things you can do is leave a message and I would hit it with text, uh, voicemail. If you're on messenger with them, I would do that. And, and also um, uh, an email with them. But I would say something along these lines. <clears throat> hey, if I did something to offend you, uh, if I've said something that, uh, you know, you, you took, uh, you know, to be offensive or that I hurt your feelings, I apologize. I would sure love to know what it was so that I can improve my performance on a go forward basis. People, when they read something along those lines, especially if you say it with some amount of sincerity, uh, will generally respond to that. Uh, they'll feel like they have an obligation to say, no, you didn't, you didn't offend me. I just decided to move in a different direction or something like that. So um, that's, a, that's a good word hack that will bring you stacks of money. And frequently it will get a 50% or more unghosting rate. You may not end up doing the deal, but you will end up at least finding out you know, what's going on. So that will help.